Pierre Polyev comes out and leaves Christia Freeland completely destroyed and speechless. Let's get into it. Oh, yeah! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. If you followed here on the channel our discussions of Pierre Polyev, especially as of recently, I've made no understatement that I believe Pierre is the man for the job when it comes to the Prime Minister's office. And, well, first week back at the House of Commons, he's shown once again that his smart wit and, uh, I guess, no BS attitude has come back into the fray as he goes to question not only the validity of Justin Trudeau's Jamaican vacation over Christmas, but also uh, Christian Freeland's inability to answer back to problems. Now, Pierre also has the solution when it comes to what he feels Canadians need, and many Canadians agree with that solution. Let's take a listen to what happened as Pierre Polyev utterly destroys Christian Freeland and once again leaves her completely speechless, so she has to resort to not even answering her her questions during what I call schoolyard uh, bullying session. But uh, here we go. Let's uh, let's take a listen. Along comes ArriveCan, a fifty-four million dollar app we didn't need, didn't work, and could have been done for two or three hundred thousand dollars. Now we learn, uh, based on the ombudsman's audit, that seventy-six percent of the contractors did absolutely no work for the money they received. Will the Prime Minister get taxpayers back this stolen money and stop the waste that is not worth the cost? Right there, Pierre bringing out a very valid point that we found out that 76% of the workers on this $54 million Arrive Scam app did no work. They did literally nothing. We've seen back in the past in the inquiries with Larry Brock that, um, again, even... even um, Placement agencies or recruiting agencies received $11 million just to essentially be a middleman. So, of course, we want answers. And what does Christian Freeland have to come back with? Well, let's take a listen. Mr. Speaker, Canadians have learned through bitter experience that when Conservatives talk about the public finances, what they're really talking about is cutting the government support Canadians depend on. What they are talking about is cutting early learning and child care, which is supporting labour force participation at record levels in Canada and, by the way, making life more affordable for Canadian families. Hold on, hold on. What does that have to do with ArriveCan? <laughs> you see the problem here? You see, she can't even answer the question. She can't even answer a remote version of the question or beat around the bush with lies. She has to completely talk and distract about something that is nothing, literally nothing, to do with Pierre's question. She's She's been destroyed. She's utterly destroyed. And it continues from there. Let's take a listen. They want to cut essential investments in our green future. We want to cut waste and mismanagement that has risen to a level that is not worth the cost after eight years of this Prime Minister. Speaking of wasteful, uh, this Prime Minister loves to lecture Canadians on how they use energy. Uh, he says that he's just like every other Canadian when he uh, stays with a friend at an $89,000 a week vacation. The average Canadian uh, emits 15 tonnes of carbon per year. His trip emitted 100 tons of carbon in one week. Did he pay the full carbon tax on each ton he admitted for his luxurious vacation? I want to know, did his family cash their carbon rebate check? It's almost a thousand bucks. I can well, look at Christian Freeland coming back with the snide little remark. Again, this is a sign that we're starting to get under the skin of the liberals, that, that she has to come back with, well, did you cash your, your carbon rebates? Did you cash back the money that we already stole from you? <laughs> Let me just jot it back a second so that we can get Pierre's full full answer here. His answer is great, folks. Again, lays Christina Freeland right out to dry. Here we go. I can tell the, the member that I pay for my own vacations and that of my family. And, <laughs> and M M Mr. Speaker, Canadians who pay for their own vacations are also paying too much for food. We have a bill, a common sense conservative bill, C234, that would take the carbon tax off the farmers 
that feed us and the consumers that desperately need to put nutrition on their table. Will the Prime Minister stop blocking the bill, pass this law so that Canadians can afford food? Yeah. Yeah. Mayor's got it right on the head. And of course, he's for force, force, I almost said forcing. He's focusing on his answer to the climate issue, to, to carbon tax. This is a scam. The whole thing is a scam. When you look at a Rive scam, it's the same thing. It's spending millions upon millions of Canadians' dollars on essentially nothing. It's just covering the deficits that this Liberal government is upscaling at all times. Now, what is going to be the solution? Well, Pierre Polyev offers that solution. Now, let's take a look. I've visited with three farmers in my riding over the, over the Christmas break. They pay a combined total of about $630,000 in carbon tax in 2023. And they got zero back. So I, I wonder what the uh, what the leader has to say about uh, you know the Liberals' comments that people are getting more back than they pay in when these farmers and this is just three average farmers in our riding um, that that paid six hundred plus thousand dollars in 2023 alone in carbon tax, and that's what the 20 percent exemption rate, not the full carbon tax. They're only paying 20 percent. That is the story. I so keep in mind, Christian Freeland was so quick to jump up and snide back. I wonder if Pierre's cashed his almost $1,000 rebate in carbon taxes. I bet those farmers were so thrilled to get their, uh, their rebate checks. I hear from the farmers in my constituency. I stood and mentioned the Madero's farm in South Carleton. I read their bills into the record and asked the Prime Minister how he expects them to pay those bills when he quadruples the tax. The Madero's farm... He's paying $100,000 in carbon taxes. One farm. He wants to quadruple that to well over $400,000. How are they going to pay that tax? Uh, this is the worst part of the, the, the Liberal NDP carbon tax. They plan to quadruple it. So as bad as your bills are today, if they get re-elected, the NDP and the Prime Minister We'll quadruple the tax to 61 cents a litre for gasoline and similar proportional increases on gas, uh, natural gas, propane and oil heating will follow. That is their plan. Be very clear, the choice in the next election will be between a costly coalition that tax your food, punish your work, take your money, double your housing costs, and unleash crime and chaos in your community, or common sense conservatives that will ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, stop the crime. Once again, Pierre Polyev coming out and not only completely destroying Christia Freeland and her wacky, wacky views on the country, but also showing exactly what his plan is to fix things for Canadians. Now, I fully am in backing of what Pierre Polyev is talking about. At the very minimum, the carbon tax should be exempt. If they're going to rule out anything before an election, it should be exempt to farmers because, well, that affects us at the grocery store. That's what really hits Canadians the hardest. Now, I'm definitely on the fence of saying any carbon tax uh, should be omitted because, well, like I said, it's a scam. The whole thing is a scam. There is no climate emergency. Um, we are carbon positive in this country. When you look at the amount of trees in our country pulling out the CO2 from the atmosphere, uh, it, or recycling it, I should say. But but the, the problem here is that we have an out-of-touch liberal government that wants to distract, that wants to bend the knee any chance they get to make it seem like they're on the, the, the side of the people of Canada when they have no grasp on reality. They have no vision for the future. And clearly, it's abundantly clear at this point that the Conservatives are the way to go and are the way things are going to go after this next election. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments in regards to Freeland getting absolutely demolished in the House of Commons. Maybe we'll be covering, uh, we'll definitely cover more of these antics in the House of Commons now that Parliament is back in session. If it's your first time here, I hope this video has earned your subscription. Make sure to uh, slide over and check that subscribe button. And while you're doing it, hit your bell for notifications as our schedule has changed. And this week, uh, I had announced that Saturday we would be sitting down with Tamara Leach. Uh, due to a scheduling issue, that has actually been changed to this Friday. So instead of Saturday, we'll be doing it a day earlier on Friday. Um, we're going to sit down at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Mountain, 8 p.m. Central. 
uh, to sit down and have a good old fashioned chit chat with uh, my dear friend Tamara Leach. I'm looking very forward to having that interview. I would encourage each and every one of you to come out and watch that show. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a fun time, and uh, we're pretty much going to talk about whatever Tamara wants. And it's going to be uh, it's going to be great to see her here in the chat. And I look forward to having each and every one of you there. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.